my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Man Cave. It is Friday, March 15th, and uh, I'll tell you about that uh, phone call yesterday <laughs> in a minute, but I thought I would start off with um, a little uh, tune I wrote. If you had asked me, when did you write this song, I would have said, oh, four or five years ago, you know, and I would have only been off by a decade. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote this uh, in 2007, and I swear I thought I just wrote it a few years ago. I really did. Does time get away from you or what? Oh my gosh, it's pitiful. And uh, <clears throat> this is not any kind of a biographical song or anything. This is just one of them. One of many dozens and dozens and dozens I've written that are just on the shelf. And uh, I... Well, I might have played it on this channel, but I don't think so. I don't think I ever... In fact, I'm pretty sure I only sang it one time ever, and that was at Panera's Restaurant, probably back in 2007 when I wrote it. <laughs> so here it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, this is about a very uncaring woman. <laughs> uh, I'll probably get hate, hate notes on this one. But anyway, uh, uh, well, it's, it's called the uh, River of Tears Yodel. It goes something like this. Well, I didn't know blue till I saw my baby last night. No, I didn't know blue till I saw my baby last night. She keeps me worried so I don't even know what's right And she just says I'll cry you a river tear My baby wants my money and she wants me to work hard too Yeah my baby wants my money she wants me to work hard too she got no time for me cause she got a lot of shopping to do And she just says I'll cry you river tear I don't know why my baby always has to treat me this way No I don't know why my baby thinks she has to treat me this way I'm always nice to her, but I never know quite what to say. She just says, I'll cry you river tea. Well, if my baby wasn't pretty, I'd probably just leave her behind. If my baby wasn't pretty, I'd walk off and leave her behind. And I know my baby's pretty cause I'm always standing last in line And she just says I'll cry you a river tea Hey folks, I'm drowning in a river tea <laughs> Now you know why I never play it uh. I've got dozens and dozens of songs that I never, ever, ever do <laughs> for good reason. And that's probably just one more. Uh, okay, the phone call yesterday that we ended abruptly on was not an emergency. but And I truly did, whether you believe it or not, I truly did have it on Do Not Disturb. In fact, I forgot to take it off of Do Not Disturb until like noon that same day so I finally took it off but anyway um, it was just JR wanting to know uh, if I would help him for another project <laughs> as usual and uh, he wants me to fix the brakes on Oliver's wagon uh, and he wants me to do it today because I think the parade is what tomorrow maybe or is it Sunday I don't know anyway it's it's probably Sunday because that would be the 17th and I think that's St. Patrick's Day well, anyway, he wants me to fix the brakes, and so that's my project for today. <laughs> it's just, it's never-ending. I'm telling you, it's never-ending. 
Uh, the auction's going well. Taylor Classical 750, uh, Martin uh, 1200, and the RSW Mando at 3250. Those are all, in my opinion, good deals. Um, I'm not worried about the fact that the prices are kind of low right now because it doesn't end till the 28th. And uh, so, anyway, if anybody's having trouble with the auction, uh, go ahead and send me an email. Again, don't expect an immediate response, but I'll definitely get back to you before it's time for the auction to end. Um, but if you're having trouble, let me know, and I'll try to figure out whatever the problem is. The one fellow that said he needed his password reset, I, I did... F Thanks to one of you guys that told me where to go find that, I went in and reset his password. And then I went and read the email just a minute later. He says, don't worry about it. I've already figured out a way to get around it. And I've created a new account or whatever with a different whatever. So I'd already reset it. But anyway, I do know how to do that now If I if you run into that problem. Or at least I think I do. Um, I have a little PSA for you today. Uh, this, you know, relates to nothing on the channel, but I just thought I'd mention this just in case somebody doesn't pay attention to this kind of thing. You see this here? Well, I had blood tests and my, uh, doctor says, uh, you know, do you realize you have a lot of allergies? And of course I already knew that. And, uh, my daughter, in fact, she inherited it from me. She has to take shots every week. I mean, she's really bad, way worse than me, but my dad had allergies. I have lots of allergies too. And I mean, lots of them. And the doc and, and all my doctors have always said, you need to stay on an allergy pill. Well, I don't know. I don't like to stay on medicine. I really don't. But this doctor was very insistent <laughs> He says, you need to stay on this. You really do. He says, you have a lot of allergies. And he says, it's, you need to stay on it. And he recommended like Zyrtec or something. So uh, that Ceterizine or Ceterizine, however you pronounce it, C-E-T-R-I-Z-I-N-E, -E, something like that, Ceterizine. So this is the generic form of Zyrtec. <clears throat> So when you're in, like, this was Walgreens brand, but it doesn't really matter if you're talking Walgreens, CVS, or whatever pharmacy, if they've got their own store brand. Um, you know, so, so right, you know, the, the Zyrtec, I think, came in 60 tablets, and I'm, there could have been 30 tablets, but I think it was 60. I'm, I'm not really sure. So the Zyrtec was 30 tablets. It was in the neighborhood of 48 or $9. It was pretty expensive. So the Walgreens brand right next to it was the same number of tablets, 60 tablets or whatever, and it was like $10 cheaper, $38 or something like that. Don't know the exact numbers. It doesn't matter. But anyway, so I thought, well, I'm definitely going to go ahead and get the store brand. That's a lot cheaper, you know. And um, then I kept looking and quite a ways over. It wasn't right next to them. It was, you know, several items over. I saw this one. And it's the same exact ingredients, exactly the same. And it's 365 tablets. Not just 60 tablets, 365. And guess how much this was? It was only like $50. So <laughs> way better price. So that's my, my point is in this PSA is don't just instantly grab the first one, which is, you know, I'm not picking on Sue, but that's how she would do it. She would just look at the one right next to it. And, you know, I like to look at stuff. I, I keep searching for, because a lot of times you'll find a better deal. This is not just a better deal. <laughs> this is hugely different in price. So anyway, if, especially if you're on some kind of a allergy medicine like that, check that out because um, that's way better price. And it's a whole year supply versus, you know, getting two months supply for way better price. So there's your PSA for today. And just in case you hadn't thought of that, now you have. Um, I did a little bit of other stuff last night. Um, my uh, grandson, uh, Isaac, JR's son, came over last night and was wanting to talk to Sue or interview Sue. She was, he's supposed to interview a family member about relatives and he wanted to interview her on her side of the family. And, uh, so anyway, they were doing that and they pulled out a bunch of articles and things. And this is what popped up on my side. 
And I've told you about this article before. It's a full page article. Complete full page. I'll try to get the picture up there where you can see it. I can't see if I'm getting it in the camera or not until I stand up. But you can see there. And I can't remember how many greats ago that is. <laughs> But at least three greats, I'm sure of that, and it may be my fourth, he may be my fourth great-grandfather. Uh, his name was Franklin Rosa. He married Fanny, the lady sitting next to him there. And uh, it's a real cool article about uh, how, you know, he uh, escaped the Italian army, basically, and came to the United States, and then, you know worked his way into Missouri, and uh, it's just a really cool article about how his life and what he did and how he made a living and all that kind of stuff. It's it's pretty interesting. I kind of think most of you would like it, So, um, or if most of you that are interested in history, I think, would like it. Let's just say it that way. Um, so what I'm doing is I scanned it with my phone uh, and with a text converter, and uh, I'm presently putting that into a document. And I'll eventually make that available somehow, either just as a download on my website or or maybe just dedicate a page on the website where you can read it on the website. I, I don't know, but I'll do something where if you're interested in that, and it is, it's a pretty cool article. It's a little flowery. I think, uh, I think the lady uh, romanticized it a bit, the, the lady that wrote it. She, her name is Erna Henry, uh, Erna Erna Rosa Henry, uh, she was a, a Rosa also, and I think it was her grandparents, uh, it was his, my grandmother's death, yeah. Um, yeah, so apparently these people were her grandparents. Well, anyway, uh, she was really old when she wrote this, I, the way I understand it. I'm sure she's passed away by now, because she wrote this quite a long time ago. Um, but she was pretty old herself. And therefore, it's kind of romanticized, you know, a bit. And, and there's a part in there that I cannot verify. It says that um, he was working in a restaurant in uh, England. And uh, because he had escaped to England, uh, his father was apparently wealthy and had connections everywhere. And so whatever. Anyway, he went to stay with friends in England uh, to escape the Italian army. And he was working at a restaurant in England. And at that moment, in you know, while he was working there, um, someone, the queen, apparently, now this is what it says. I don't believe that it's exactly true. Uh, the queen had sent someone to get a hold of him and came into the restaurant and uh, asked him to uh, come to the palace. And so he did. He and, Well, he first wanted to refuse it. He didn't want to go. And then he did go. And then she asked him to play piano at or organ at her wedding. And, um, I can't verify any of that. I've been able, I've been, I've looked for coronations and different weddings and different things, and I couldn't find anything in that time frame. But I don't think that the lady that wrote the article is lying. I think she's just, you know, romanticizing the stories that he probably passed down to her and, and, you know, and it's probably something along those lines, but it wasn't probably exactly the way she told it. That's the way I think. It's just, you know, how your memory, and especially when you get older and stuff, you're, you you always think of these really cool stories and memories, kind of like I do. And uh, anyway, so the point is, I, I am going to try to make it available, even though there is a little bit of maybe some fantasy in there. Uh, but the rest of it's pretty darn cool. It's a pretty interesting article. I think you'll like it. Moving on down, um, I have a little short uh, Sadie video for you. You know, do you think it was just coincidence that I that yesterday was the day I sang my Murphy's Law song, and then I got interrupted, you know, like Murphy's Law uh, on the phone, and then this kind of happened here? We're trying. This is number three, and she did great on number one. Then number two, she just balked on it. Finally, she got it. So let's try number four. All right, go pick it up. Here, go pick it up. Here, go get it. Come on. Come on, Sadie. She's just a ball of fire. <laughs> she's, 
got an itch. Oh my gosh. Give me a break. What's the problem? Come on. Go pick it up. Come on. Go pick it up. Here. Here. Sadie. Pick it up. Come on. Pick it up. Here. Come here. She sees one way over there. That's where she's headed. Good girl. Pick it up. Bring it here. Bring it here. Good girl. Good girl. Bring it here. Come on. Bring it here. She only does this on camera where she goes around me. <laughs> she usually brings them right straight to me till I turn the camera on. Okay, thank you. Good job. Good job. Yeah, good job. Good job. Yeah, good girl. Yeah, good girl. Okay, go get it. Pick it up. Pick it up. Here's another one. Well, it's not, <laughs> it's not even focusing now. There she is, she sees it. All right, bring it here, bring it here. I can't, I got so much in my hands, everything's a pain. Bring it here, bring it here. Come on, bring it here. Thank you, good job, good job. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Everything I do just is so hard. Got my hands full, I'm trying to film her. Trying to hold all these antlers. I got a bunch of them in my hands. I'm trying to hold the camera. Okay, go get the last one. Go get it. I think that's the last one. Go pick it up. Sadie, Sadie. Come on, pick it up. Go pick it up. Sadie. Well, there goes this distraction. Every time there's something. Every single time. It's just not even worth it. It just drives me crazy trying to teach her something there's always a distraction out here it's like it never ever fails <laughs> yeah do you think that was a coincidence that yesterday was the day i sang my murphy's law song <laughs> and, and there, that wasn't the only man there was plenty more i i could i could go on for another hour just telling you about all the murphy's law items that happened yesterday it was a bad day but I won't do that. Um, here's just another little video clip that uh, I'll show you. And um, this is just because I have it to show you. Well, I also like bluebirds. And so I fixed up this bluebird house. It usually has bluebirds in it every year. Uh, it had fa fallen in disrepair. The, the white part is plastic, so that part stays okay. But the bottom and the top had rotted away. So I built a new bottom and a new top for it. I also cleaned out all those houses and uh, put some uh, diatomaceous earth in there and a few little pine needles just for them to get a good start on their bedding. And here's what I pulled out of there. Now, this was fairly clean uh, this spring because I had looked in there. There was none of this uh, stuff in there. So. Uh, yeah, the uh, sparrows had taken over. So I've been kind of watching it today to keep the sparrows driven off. But uh, anyway, it's, it's quite a bit of work. I need to uh, straighten this pole up. In fact, I think I'm going to pull this pole out of the ground with the bobcat, pull it up. And I think I'm going to drill the hole over here a little further away from the fence. And uh, I'm going to make a new uh, rig similar to this rig for this one here. And I'm going to get that done fairly soon, though at least I have 12 houses ready for the Martins now. So I think we're in good shape. Yeah, after I fix the brakes on the trailer. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I, I spent at least two hours yesterday looking for... Um, the software to install my accounting program up here on this computer and uh, couldn't find the disks anywhere. And this is not a, a modern program, uh, you know, where you could download it type thing. That in fact, the company changed hands and they discontinued and went on with a different program. And uh, I don't, you know, I don't want to change, especially the fact that I'm retired. I just want to continue using that program. And it's a great program. It really is. And, uh, yeah, 
It just and there's no way you can just copy it from that machine to this machine. In fact, I thought I might be able to do that because see, I do know a lot about the behinds the scenes uh, of how the software works. Like I know how to go into the reg edit, you know, or registry editor and go into the the internals of the computer and man, you can screw up a computer in a hurry there. I'm telling you. And uh, I do know how to go in there and edit it and, and add things. So I thought, well, maybe it won't be that bad. You know, maybe I could copy the, the data up here and then go into the registry, e uh, the editor and add the lines into the editor that need to be added in there. So I started taking a photograph of all the lines on that computer down there that I would have to put in this computer up here. And after about 25 or 30 pages of taking snapshots, I said, no, no this ain't going to work. Because it wouldn't be too bad if it was just one or two words you'd type on 25 or 30 pages. That's not too bad. But the lines are like this long, you know, and uh, it's just, it's just impossible. Murphy's Law. So, um... Anyway, at this point in time, I don't know how I'm going to get that program up here, but I would really, really, really like to get that program up here. So if anybody has an idea, maybe there's an app out there that would um, somehow um, um, clone that app up to this computer. If I know you can clone a whole hard drive. I know that, but I... I don't want to clone the whole hard drive. I just want to clone that app. So if anybody knows of anything that does that, maybe let me know. Because, I mean, there probably is something out there. I just haven't looked for it. But anyway, that's the name of that tune. <laughs> it's just not easy being me. I'm telling you, I don't care what you say. It's not easy being me. Let's see. Let's go to the top here. Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> Terry uh, Hackard, I'll just say it that way since he said it's similar to Jerry, um, is number one up there. Brian Byler and Kathy Voles and then Rod Wintler. And uh, let's see. I'm looking for question marks. I don't see any up there. Uh, moving on down. Looking for question marks. I'm probably missing comments or something but if they don't have question marks I'm probably just going to be missing them and Dottie says she's been praying for it and my hands and for different people thank you Dottie um, well there's got to be question marks here somewhere okay uh, Michael 2x says where is the Rosa Meister hmm I guess that was before we went live Let's see. There's looking for question marks, question marks, question marks. Down here, just before we went live, I see one from James Cop. It says, uh, "Good morning from San Leon, Texas. Fixing to acquire a skid steer with power enough to drive many attachments." Yeah, I'll tell you what, skid steers. It's got to be one of the greatest pieces of construction equipment ever created by a human. I mean, it honestly is one of the best things ever. I, I've often said the last thing I will sell will be my skid steer. Um, you know, I, even if I move into an apartment, I might keep my skid steer so that I can move a refrigerator around. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, those things are handy. It's unbelievable how handy they are. And how much work they can do, too. Especially if you get a big one. Like the one I have is a T300. It, it's not the biggest, but it's pretty dang big. And it, you can do just about anything a bulldozer can do. You can pretty much do with that skid steer. It's, it's crazy. Um, you can pretty much just push trees right out of the ground with it. It's, it's a, a unbelievable power. It's just unbelievable power. Uh D.E. says, does anyone here like Carol Burnett? On her official channel, they started running full episodes of the Carol Burnett show, just in case anyone's interested. I always did think Carol Burnett was, was funny. I, when I was a kid, you know, she was on, of course, or a young person anyway. She was on a long time. Um, but I, and Tim Conway was always hilarious. He was just crazy good. Right after we went live, Dottie was the first one. She's got a couple of question marks there. It says, ever since I started watching 
everyone is like a big family every day. Yeah, that's kind of the way I look at it too. It's really nice to have everybody here pretty much. A lot of them are the same guys every day, and every once in a while you'll see someone new. And uh, Dottie Hildebrand says, Mighty Fine Chirp. <laughs> well, I don't know how mighty fine it was, but it's that's one I swear to you. That's probably, it's if for sure it's no more than the third time I've ever sang the song to any, well, to, that anyone else could hear it. Uh, that might only be the second time, but for sure it's no more than the third. Um, moving on down. Spike Moto. Hi, Jerry. Have you ever been asked to work on carbon fiber guitar? Have you ever done a setup on one? Are they easier to work on? Are they uh, special challenges? Um... I don't think I have. I'm not really sure. It seems like I've had a carbon fiber instrument in the shop at one time or another. Caleb might even remember. It seemed like we had one, but I can't remember. Um, maybe a fiddle or something. Well, the, the things that would be hard are, are pretty much the same kinds of problems that you're going to have with uh, your, uh, oh, what's the fiberglass, ovations. It's kind of similar to that in that they're hard to clamp, hard to hold, uh, you know, getting things to stick to them. If you, if you got anything that's broken loose, um, you know, you got all those kinds of issues. Now, as far as the actual setup, as long as you don't have to move the bridge or anything like that, the, the normal setup should be about the same. As far as, you know, your fret leveling and, and setting the action and all that, it should be pretty much the same. It shouldn't be any more difficult, I don't think. Though I don't have that much experience with that kind of thing on, on a fiber, on a, you know, on the, uh, can't even think of what you call it, carbon fiber. Yeah. So I don't really have much experience with that, but uh, it's, the setup itself shouldn't be much different, really. But the rest of it, if you got to do major work to it, yeah, that's hugely different. Zappa, Jerry, you should take that newspaper article to a copy shop and get a good full-size copy for yourself. I actually have another page just like that in a glass frame outside on, right outside that wall, right there. It's hanging on the other side of the wall. So I do actually have it framed. But yeah, a copy shop wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, Gary Hyden, you have to take allergy meds before you need them. They must build up into your system. I've been taking uh, loratadine claritin for years. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't disagree with you there. I ran out of that allergy medicine. Um, I don't know. It was, you know, remember when I got sick not too long ago, a couple months ago, or a few months ago. Um, I ran out of it for four or five days, and bingo, it hit me, man. I mean, it's like it hit me. So, yeah. Yeah, if, if I stay on it, I do pretty good, but I have to stay on it. Uh, Timothy Werbo. Sadie looks like she almost has you trained for finding antlers. <laughs> yeah, she definitely does. It's... She's a good dog. She really is. There's nothing wrong with her at all. It's just that she's not what... I don't think she's going to amount to what I'm looking for. She, she just... She, it's funny because when you walk outside and the first time she sees you, she's super high energy. You'd think she just is the the biggest ball of fire on the planet. But in, it quickly just tails off and it's just like she's just kind of like oh, whatever you know this is I'm just chilling out here <laughs> I don't know I don't know if it's going to work out or not I'm not get I'm not throwing in the towel yet but I'm not too sure it's going to work out David Tharp did you know that Murphy besides being an optimist was quite the philosopher he came to the conclusion that celibacy is not is not hereditary. <laughs> Here, uh, Gary says, your pasture is greening up. Yep, it definitely is. And that just scrolled. I do not know where that went. 
Uh, yep, okay, there it is. Clyde Lewis, Jerry, I saw that there was a tornado warning close to Rolla last night. Did you see any funnel clouds? No, we didn't see anything, or I didn't hear anything. Of course, inside here, I heard a little low rumble again. Seemed like it was around 4 in the morning, something like that. But it was just a low rumble. It wasn't real, you know, big loud thunder or anything. And then it just went away. Clyde says, the burnt houses are looking great. Thanks. Cup of cool. Mr. Jerry, it seems like every other time that I check, I have to resubscribe because for some reason your YouTube is unsubscribing me every other video. People need to check. Well, thanks. Um, again, I... I I totally agree with you. I don't. I'm not. I'm not arguing with you at all. But I am also offering the caution that don't just click subscribe, folks, because if you click it, it will unsubscribe you. You know. I mean, if you're already subscribed, I mean. So what you need to do is you need to check and see what it says. Does it say subscribed or does it say, you know, if it says the word subscribe, that means you need to click it to subscribe. But if it says subscribed with a D on the end, then you are already and don't click it again or you'll be unsubscribed. So I'm just offering that word of caution, but I don't I don't disagree with what you're saying because it does happen quite often. Chipwood, uh, looks like you're doing a great job with Sadie and and the fetching of deer antler. Would you be interested in German Shepherd that fetches firewood <laughs> that's what our shepherd does yeah well buck would do that for me too i'd be out there uh, uh buck was a uh, you know he was a black lab and i'd be putting firewood into the wood furnace and he'd run over and grab a piece and bring it over to me and i'd throw it in the wood furnace you know he was pretty good at that actually he was pretty smart you know he wasn't like the smartest you know sharpest knife in the drawer but he was pretty sharp he, he's pretty sharp um, Zappa, uh, says, Jerry, there is no way to transfer a program to another computer, not since the DOS-based Windows. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, sort of true. I, I kind of agree with that, and I kind of don't, because there are ways that you can do it. Uh, it's just that they're not the easiest, best way to do it. But I would imagine by now somebody's probably come up with an app that would, uh, clone a particular program, but I don't know. Maybe not. I I would think I I mean I'm not a programmer, but if I was a programmer, I'm almost sure I could write a program to do it. So you would think if I could do it, somebody else could do it. Pretty much, if you can think of it, you know, in computing, pretty much if you can think of it, then generally you can do it. If it makes sense, you know what I'm saying. I mean, there's. I don't know. That's pretty much my theory on it anyway. Maybe I'm all wet. Um, I think the point is if you can define it. If, as long as you can define it, you should be able to do it. Dottie Hildebrand, I won't be with you all on Monday. I'll be at the hospital. Well, I'll pray for you, Dottie. Hope everything goes well. Paul Lanier, Spike Moto... Composite acoustic was where I bought my carbon fiber guitar and nothing has been needed but string changes. Yeah, I would think that uh, they would be fairly stable. I would think that. Um, you know, obviously you're going to have to do fret jobs from time to time, just like any instrument. But uh, other than that, I would think they'd be really stable. Uh, the, the trick would be, did they set the intonation perfectly. If they set the intonation perfectly, then you'd probably never have any problem at all with a carbon fiber instrument. Uh, can you tell the difference in sound? Yeah, I can, or at least I can on the instruments I've heard. Uh, you can definitely tell there's a difference in sound of a carbon fiber versus an acoustic wood instrument. Um, not that it's bad, it's just different. You know, you, you can you can pretty much tell the difference. They have a, a real depth of tone on the carbon fiber instruments, or at least the ones I've heard so far. <clears throat> uh, Gerald uh, Tackett says, Have you ever tried X-bracing on a mandolin build? Uh, what can you tell me about the benefits or problems? 
No, I never did. Um, I left that up to the other guys. I, I felt like it's pretty hard to beat a Lloyd Lower mandolin, you know, and uh, I didn't see any point in messing with it. Um, like I said, every single thing you can think up, pretty much, it's been tried on instruments. And so I pretty much just stick with what works the best. And uh, it's, uh, I don't know, you can, you can think of it a bunch of different ways, but uh, it's not tradition so much with me. It's what worked the best, you know. And uh, it's pretty hard to beat a Lloyd Lower Mandolin. Pretty hard to beat a Stradivari violin. Pretty hard to beat a, you know, a Martin guitar or a Taylor guitar. I mean, those, but those are made a lot alike. You know, those kinds of modern guitars are made a lot alike. Pretty hard to beat them. I mean, you can go monkeying around and trying different things. So there you go. That's all I can tell you about it. That's really the way I, that's just the way I look at it. Um, Mike Bennett. Here I purchased your guitar Nashville number system training a few days. I haven't received the download yet. I did it on my phone. I might have made a mistake. No, Mike, uh, sometimes it doesn't show up apparently. And, you know, a lot of times it, it uh, anything coming from outside on a phone or a computer or tablet or anything it's looked at as a threat and it it can go into spam or it can it can even be deleted in some cases um as a, a defense mechanism on your or you know a, to, to avoid uh, viruses and those kinds of things they do those kinds of things but so you probably should have had it you should have had it right away and so if you don't have it um if you would mike send me an email and i'll try to remember to get in there today and, and i'll send you a new uh link to it uh, Eric Sandell, you are lucky that your programs run on modern software. I have to find old Windows. Yeah, uh, yeah. This well, this one was written, you know, on I don't know Windows Seven or something. I mean, it's so it's fairly adaptable. Um, it would be better, obviously, if it was a new version of it, but they don't make it anymore, and I really don't want to switch computers i mean switch software at this time in my life i mean you know it's it's like why well, learn a whole new accounting program it would do me no good at all uh because i'm not in business now i'm you know I might as well just use the one i've got and call it good so i'll keep looking maybe i'll find the discs i know um uh, melissa had borrowed them uh, to install she wanted that program on her computer so she borrowed my discs and uh, I'm pretty positive she brought them back I thought maybe uh, uh, Emery might have borrowed them but she says she didn't so anyway I can't find it uh, let's see uh, I just scrolled on me again doggone it um, yeah Oh, and he has to have a hard drive that's not bigger than two gigabytes and a small RAM to run in the software. Wow, that's a lot of restrictions. Um, James Freestad, my grandfather had a very friendly dog that did whatever it felt like. Its name was Useless. <laughs> yeah, she, well, she you can tell she's pretty smart. I mean, like, she does get it. Like, even when she saw the one way out there, I was able to call her and said, no, come back over here. And, and I pointed to it, and she went to it. And so, I mean, she's starting to get it. I just don't know if she's going to go on from there. <laughs> Mark Nasdem, uh, there he says, good morning, and... Yolanda and I will be at the St. Patty's Parade Saturday, okay? Well, then you'll probably see Oliver, because I think that's where he's going to be. I think it's in Rolla, isn't it? Or is it the one in Newburgh? I don't know. Is there one, Or is there one in Newburgh? Um, but I think it's in Rolla. Uh, John Warren uh, says, Jerry, are, are any of your Rosa relatives associated with the Hill District in St. Louis? I love the Italian restaurants there. N to my knowledge, not really. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure all of our Italian relatives were hillbillies. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure of anything. 
um, I do know there were a lot of roses up around the St. Louis area, and some of them could have been on the hill for all I know. Uh, let's see. Moving on down. Theron Corbett says, is there a special hide glue for carbon fiber <laughs> instruments? <laughs> Uh, I would say it would be epoxy. I don't really know, honestly, about uh, fiber instruments as far as... Uh, real, I know you're being silly, but but on the other hand, uh, I don't know what kind of glue you would actually use on a, on a fiber instrument, really. I would assume it would be epoxy. But I kind of doubt they would use hide glue on them. <laughs> uh, moving on down. Let's see. Matt says, hi from snowed in Denver. <laughs> uh, you, do you, can you get a snow shovel or do you need me to ship you one? Jerry, I'm writing a uh, love ballad entitled, Always Be True to Your Teeth or They Will Be False to You. <laughs> Wavy gravy. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, Paul Lanier is the last one there. I don't see any um, I don't see any question marks. Well, anyway, uh, that looks like that's the end of it, guys. Uh, 163 viewers on here at the moment. Thank you for being here. I um, uh, hope you didn't hate the song too much. We will see you with something else, at least on Monday, and maybe even a video for this weekend. You just never know. Thanks for being here. We'll see you then. Yeah.